It has been a while. CSS text box lets you trim vertical spaces. The file system access API is supported on Android and WebView. State preserving way to move a DOM element and like this myth comes to dialogue. Also, many updates in baseline. Hi, I'm Mariko. Let's dive in and see what's new in Chrome for the past three releases. CSS text box lets you control vertical spacing precisely by using the font metrics. Every font produces a different amount of space above and below the characters, which determines the size of the element. It has been impossible to control the size of these spaces until now. The new text box trim property specifies the size to trim above and below, and text box edge property specifies how it should be trimmed. For example, trim at cap height, which is the top of uppercase characters. You can also write this using the shorthand text box property as well. Find out more about how to use these new properties in the CSS text box trim article. Added in Chrome 133, a DOM primitive, node prototype move before, lets you move element around the DOM tree without resetting the element state. When you remove, then reinsert an element to move a DOM element, it will reset the state of that element. Using this new primitive, the state of a node is preserved. So iframes remain loaded, active element remains in focus, things like popovers and modal dialogues remain open, and CSS transitions or animations carry on. The file system access API has been available on Chrome desktop for some time now. This API let web apps interact with files on the user's local file system. From Chrome 132, the API is available on Android and in web views as well. To need a file, call show open file picker. This method shows a file picker, then returns a file handle that you can use to lead the file. To save a file to disk, you can use the same file handle you got earlier or call show save file picker to get a new file handle. If you have used popover API to make a popover, you know that one of the nice features of popover API is the light dismiss behavior. Users can click the background and the popover element is closed without specifically hitting the close button. This light dismiss capability is now supported in the dialog element as well. When you set close by attribute to any, the dialog can be dismissed by clicking outside of the dialog or press escape keys. This is the same behavior when popover is set to auto. And here is the news about baseline. First, baseline newly available. These are features that shipped in all four major browsers recently. With the scroll bar got our CSS property, you can reserve a space for the scroll bar to avoid unwanted layout changes when scroll bar appears or disappears. With scroll bar width, you can create a narrower scroll bar or even to hide the scroll bar completely without affecting scrollability. With the Ruby align CSS property, you can specify alignment of Ruby base text and Ruby annotation text. Promise try is a convenience method to make error handling for synchronous requests. Using this, you can eliminate callback functions when you try to request with promise resolve. WebAssembly now supports garbage collection and tail call optimizations. Array find last and find last index are very convenient methods to get items from the end of an array. This feature has been supported by all major browsers for 30 months, which means it is now baseline widely available. Individual transform properties, which gives you finer grain control over CSS transforms, are now baseline widely available as well. If you want to know more about baseline and difference between newly and widely available, check out this short video I made. You can also find more about the baseline status of a feature at the Web Platform Status Dashboard. And lastly, the Intuo project is returning for 2025 with a list of focus areas, including view transitions, CSS anchor positioning, and navigation API. Be sure to check out the project's announcement. All the details, including links, docs, and specs are in the post linked in the description or in the release notes.
hit the subscribe button now so that you don't miss the latest Chrome DevTools video or the CSS podcast and more. I'm Mariko, and I will be back in three months to tell you more about what's new in Chrome.